and uh, the first question that I'm posing to you is this one. What's the meaning of cutting technique in Frisbee? What is the meaning of cutting technique in Frisbee? My good friend, Emalia. Yeah, a technique used to confuse a defender or a technique used to confuse the opponent. That is what we call cutting technique. Who is a cutter? Who is a cutter? Who is a cutter? Swadata. A cutter is a person who confuses the defender. Wavata, who is a cutter? Try to be in class, young guy. Caleb? Yeah, a person who confuses the defender is called a cutter. Then cutting is that technique, that way of uh, confusing a defender. Can you describe for me two methods of getting free from an opponent? To receive a pass. Yeah, yeah. Two methods oh, on, uh, of getting free from yeah. the opponent. Yes. By cutting. By cutting. Uh -huh. Going side to side and changing direction, which, which is the same as cutting. So by cutting, by confusing the defender. Okay, very good. Since you can remember what we learned about it today, it is now my pleasure to introduce to you the today's uh, lesson, which is uh, marking. Marking. Uh, young girl, what do one? Marking in free. B. We say marking this B. Monkey. Say marking in this B. Now we have some people here who are just ever quiet. They don't talk, and eh? they are just quiet, doing their own things, doing nonsense. Well, that is who. Bless. Amina. Ah, be in class. Hmm? Hmm? Wavata, a good friend of mine. Marking, marking, marking. Even in football, we have what we call marking, isn't it? Yes. You people, have you ever played uh, uh, football? Yes. So, uh, marking in frisbee, not marking in football. And you got mark, 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 mark. Eh? You mark the, you you mark the opponent. If it is uh, in football, you be man to man. You be man to man in football. I can't help you tonight. I can, I can't help you tonight. You are marking, attacking that person. But now we are not talking about that marking. The marking that we are interested in is marking. In. Okay. So this is guarding a thrower. Marking in frisbee, it means to guard a thrower. Guarding a thrower. To prevent him. A thrower is that one now who wants to throw. The, the one who wants to throw. The, the one who wants to throw. The, somebody wants to tell me that the one who throws the frisbee. 
Frisbee is a game. Frisbee is a game. A game that is played using what? This. So marking it involves guarding. That's why she's misbehaving there. You know, it is not a duty of the teacher to teach and at the same time pause to remind you to listen to whatever the teacher is explaining. That's what she can mind you because you have to be in class. You know, uh, one problem with me is that. Uh, I always want when I'm in class, each and every person to concept that I'm explaining. <laughs> okay, uh, marking in press B. Marking in press B. So it is a technique that is used to control the ball carrier. Yeah. 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 Okay, 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 sorry. It involves guarding a thrower. Marking, it involves guarding who? A thrower. To prevent him or to prevent her from making a pass or receiving a, a pass. Okay? Yeah. Involves guarding a thrower to prevent him or her from making a pass. So uh, you will uh, put down that uh, meaning of uh, what marking is the way of preventing a thrower, mm, preventing a thrower, or it's a technique used by a defender to try and stop thrower from passing the beast. The same, same meaning. So we shall write using this one that uh, marking is a technique. What I've written on the board. So, as you can observe on page 173, there are two players there. One who want to release the disc, but there is another one trying to uh, defend. That is how uh, it looks like, most one of you without the textbook. Mm -hmm. Even this one, uh, this other one here, you can see, the one trying to uh, throw the disc, and the other one is trying to defend. That is marking, a technique used by a player to try and stop a defender in 
uh, throwing or passing than this in recipe. How to perform marking in frisbee? How to perform marking in frisbee? So in frisbee, we have got some techniques that uh, so far up to now we have talked about. The first one is which one? Touching. The second one? Making. 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 Why are you saying, why are you saying, yeah, yeah? Why are you saying, yeah, yeah? Two handed rim cuts. Is it not a technique? Can you clap for him? Ah, that is good, Munke. Yeah? One handed rim cut. No, we don't have one handed rim cut. Two handed rim cut. You, you 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 catch the rim using the two hands. Then you release using one hand. Hmm? That's why it is called two-handed. But when I talk of two-handed, some of you hear of two-handred. Isn't it? No. Boy. How to perform marking and reading. We saw yesterday how cutting is done. Now we want to see how marking is also performed. How to perform marking in fresh B. How to perform marking in B. You have to stand slightly in front of the throne. You stand slightly in front of that person who wants to release the disc to you. By the way, I am explaining some people are writing. But yeah, so you stand slightly in front of the thrower. Throw is that person who releases the disc. So you stand slightly in front of the thrower. Then you keep your arms extended and bend slightly with the hands near the waist level. Mm. So I think there is that uh, picture there. You can see what is happening as we move. Your hands extended and they should be near the waist level. Can you touch your waist? Touch your waist. Oh! I have seen wonders. Somebody is touching. This is chest. This one. This one. Hey, the waist is where? Waist is there. There, 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 there. Yeah, very good. Then the legs should be shoulder width apart. The legs should be shoulder, the shoulder, the shoulder width apart. Those are the legs. Those are the they should be shoulder weighted apart with your knees bent. With your knees bent. Are you seeing those pictures there? I want to miss mama upright. Are they standing upright? No. Eh? Your legs should be shoulder apart with the knees slightly bent. The knees should be slightly bent. Then uh, you have now to move your hands up and down 
to prevent the opponent from throwing the disc. So, Papale Sasa, you move your hands up and down. Up and down. Why should you do that? Why should you do that? Very good. So as to prevent the opponent, to prevent the thrower from throwing the this not lollipop. Monkey. Yeah. You don't just stand the way you want. At least the legs should be shoulder within apart with your knees in bending position. Then your hands should be up, down. Then you try to prevent this person from throwing wood. The this. Yeah? What? This one we shall go and do it. You not now. You 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 you, you, you will come with the, the discs so that they will go and do this one practically. You have the disc? Yeah, you will improvise the disc on Friday. We shall have to go. I think I shall be through the topic and uh, we shall go do it practically. It is enjoyable. Hmm? Kabade, kabade. And you didn't want to improvise the task. Look at this one. What's wrong? Huh? Sharif, this is the first lesson from a uh, break. And you are asking for permission to go out. That is not So, when the person you are marking managed to throw the disc, you are marking this person to ensure that he should not throw the disc. But what about if he manages to throw the disc? Yeah. So when the person that you are marking successfully managed to throw the disc, you have to shout to your teammate. Up. You shout to your teammate. Up. Can you say up? Up. 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 Yeah. Oh, you say air. 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 Yes. You alert them that the disc is up or it is already there. Air. Yeah. 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 Hey. In Kabadi, how do you shout? <laughs> then, in Tag, rugby. In Tisbu. Okay. In uh, tag rugby, we shout by saying tag. After saying tag, pass. The ref is the one who say pass. But now in this way, up, up, up. Okay. Okay. So that one, that one will only happen. If the person that you are marking, he or she has successfully done what? On the this. So you shout by saying up or you say air. Why should you say up or why should you say air? So as to alert the same man to intercept or now to block. So, hey, up. The teammate will be alert and we will try to go and look. And that is all about mapping in this video. We are moving very fast. I want us to ensure that before we come back here for third term, we are through with the class uh, grade five work. Then, yeah, then. Which people? Saturday. But now the problem is you don't understand. With us, we are moving systematically until we understand everything. Isn't it? Okay, no problem. We are actually 
uh, where we are supposed to be. So put down the notes. I think you have understood what marking in Frisbee is all about, isn't it? Yeah.
So once the disc has been thrown, while you are marking, you shout to your teammates, up, up, up. Or you can also shout, air, 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 with an intention of alerting the team next. So that they can block or intercept. The fish to intercept is to block. And yeah, oh. Are you getting something? Yes. Well, yes. Munke, are you getting something? Very good. Trevor, what's here? What's here? You see, we are getting old. Mm. Can we move on? We have three minutes to the end of our lesson. We have safety measures, safety measures that always focus on the disc. Safety measure number one, always focus on the this. On the other player, so that you should avoid collision. We need to avoid the collision, focus on the disc and the other player. So, Georgie. So, come on, yeah. Then you have to wear the shoes that have a good grip to avoid falling. Even when you are going to play football, you use uh, the shoes that are good. Hmm? Why? So that you should not fall down. The shoes that have got good grip that will prevent you from unnecessary falling. While jumping, you jump towards the disc and not towards the opponent. Huh? Yeah. Then lastly, observe the game spirit of fair play. Fair play. Always when you are playing in a game, when you are participating in any game, think of fair play. If you don't uh, observe fair play, then you will be sent out of the field of play and you will become a spectator. So it is good for you to observe what we call a fair play. By the way, what's a fair play? What's a fair play? They have never ever said anything. Hmm? Bless. What is a fair play? We are saying that when playing any game, you must observe what you call a fair play. Failure to do that, you will be sent out of the field of play by whoever 
is manning that game. Who is a referee? Now, what's a fair play? Amaya. Kelly. Playing fairly. Yeah? To the opponents and to a teammate. Very good. Showing respect to others while playing. Now, you don't become rude. You don't offend the other players. So that's why we are saying that always observe the game spirit of fair play by respecting the rules of the game so that you can enjoy. You know, in a game, in a game that you participate in, it's just full of enjoyment. You just enjoy. Eh? You want to win, but at the same time, you are enjoying. So for you to enjoy that game, observe fair play. Okay, tomorrow, if Allah wishes, uh, we shall be moving on to Pi voting. Pi voting. So, yeah. Have a lovely afternoon.
The man is still not here. So today we want to learn about design. We want to talk about design. We want to talk about design and the mixed media technology. And here, under design, first we start with what we call graphic design. Graphic design. And under graphic design, we shall discuss about letter construction. Letter construction. Put them there, we'll give them later. Talk about letter construction. About letter construction. My friend, you go back to class. What is your problem? Huh? Two. Very fast. So we want to talk about letter construction. So when we are doing a graphic design, we use our hands to come up with letters or symbols that can be able to bring about a message to somebody and this message we always try our best to make it attractive so that the person reading it can feel happy when i'm on the way in the morning i look at buses passing then how do I identify Michaela Bass? I look at the sticker of Amina there. And when I see Amina, I know this is Michaela Academy. And then the name, the names. Every school, they have their own style of writing their names. We have Emiland, we have Indiana Baptist, we have Bethany, we have Michaela Academies, we have St. Joseph, we have Sikunda. They have a style. They have written their word there. And so when you see it, you feel good if you belong to that school. Isn't it? So you create a way of writing that attracts somebody. You create a way. I think the other, the other one, I, I don't like them, but I just uh, like, 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 teach them. They, they, they write theirs like this. Like this, I think, something like that. And then they do like that. And then they do like that. And then like that. Ah, uh, like that, I think something like that, and then like that, isn't it? And then I think they do something like this, isn't it? So you feel attracted by the word. But the one that I love most is this one here. This one here is the one I love most. This one here is the one I love most. Mm -hmm. This one is the one I love most. Mm -hmm. This one is the one I love most. Uh -huh. So you see, when you see that name, you feel good. But imagine they wrote it like this. Hmm? Imagine they wrote it like this. You see, it's not beautiful. Isn't it? So that is what we'll talk about letter construction in graphic design. Whereby you design the letter, somebody feels attracted with what you are writing. Somebody feels good with your handwriting and they feel appeasing to read. Are we together? Are we together? And I'm saying it's not a must they be letters. You can even just use symbols. For example, we have, I uh, you know this one, boys know it. Hmm? I think this way, then again another one. Uh, and then like that. What is that? What is that? For those who are very, very smart. What is this? When you see this letter, what does it tell you? For those who are very smart. I just want to find a very smart boy. A very smart boy or a very smart girl. Kidab, what is this? Kelly, what is this? Eh? Somebody somewhere there said something. Who was it? Dabnes Mija, what is this? What did you say it is? I don't know if I was happy. I heard somebody say something else. Eh? 
Yes, the Goma. This is World Wrestling Federation. You see this, you see wrestling. So you just use letters and you feel good. You use letters, you use signs, you use a word, and then it gives you that feeling whereby you understand what they are talking about, isn't it? So you do a good handwriting. You can see now this man, they are, they are putting the two letters together, the three letters together. It's normally World Wrestling Federation. Uh, and then we have the other one. We have the other one. Uh, we have the other one like... Um, ABS, Kenya Duro of Standards, isn't it? So you do this, and then somebody will feel beautiful, and somebody will feel happy to read whatever you are writing for them, are you together? So that is what to talk about letter construction. And under letter construction, we have so many ways that we can do using either the materials or just your free hand. When you're using only your hand, we call that free hand. When you're using materials, we call that a uh, construction. What is your problem? Okay, I'm coming. So what we have, we have two methods of uh, freehand. We have two methods of freehand, or uh, even not freehand. There are two methods. There are two methods of letter construction there are two methods of letter construction so can we write this up there then i come we continue copy that let me try and put some people some music in some 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 video here right 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 Are you done? Yes. So the two methods, method number one is called the two dimension. Two dimension. Or you say two D. The second one is three dimensions. 
three dimension or we call it 3d the televisions they do hd high definition that one is from the visual the visual but here now we are writing so we do the 2d or the 3d so we start the first one which is two dimension two dimension two dimension we say the strokes are thin and light the strokes are thin and light the strokes are thin and light when we are doing the 2d the strokes are thin and light when you are doing two dimension when you are doing two dimension So, yes. then two equal to three dimension, three dimension, three dimension, which is also called 3D. The strokes, the strokes are here, it was thin. Here they are thick and dark. Here the strokes are thick and dark. We shall see when we reach constructing how they are done. The strokes are thick and dark. Then also we say the letters have what we call the 3D effect, which is the letters have length height and depth my boy what's your problem okay the letters have length height depth height depth length And depth. And depth. The letters are raised. The letters are raised. The letters are raised. Letters are raised on the surface. 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 The letters are raised. On the the surface the letters are raised on the surface so i'll give an example of a 2d and then you can try and do yours i'll give an example of a 2d so here we shall have our 2d two dimension We'll have our two dimension. We'll have our two dimension. We shall 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 have our two
shall try and create one here. Two dimension. So a two dimension, you draw the letter, you construct the letter, and here we are using just our hands. But how does it look like? This is how a two dimension looks like. Something like that. And then again, you fill it there, like that, and then you do it like that. That is it. So can you try that? Try that and try with a B. Then do, it, do, do B for me. Do B for me. After three, B, and you have written two dimensions. Then I'm writing capital letters like capital letters. I'm writing small letters, small letters. Find a human being using a pen. I'm looking for a bee. Because what is a bee? Make sure that table is not taking. I see a bee. Right? A bee? I want to see a bee. Maya, we start with the C, then we go to B. Look at you, the C is all good. Start with the C first. Amalia even has not started drawing. Good. A good space and a good letter. Good. Keep it up. Somebody is writing something very small like Pojo. You can see my line is too wide for you to see. Somebody is just writing something even you cannot see. You can write that word with me down there. You can write that word with me.
Vai, dois pouquinhos. Jorge! And you can see my letters attaching the lines. There's no letter hanging in the air there, between the spaces. Make sure your letter is lying on the line, not a zigzag writing. Make sure the letters are lying on the line correctly and properly. You should not see your, line, your letters as if they are flying away.
So you can see how I've been able to create my 2D dimension. Two dimension. You can see how I've been able to create my 2D dimension. So that is how your 2D data construction should look like. That is how your 2D data construction should look like. have this chat answer. When we come the next lesson, we shall be discussing about the three. When we come the next lesson, we shall be discussing about the three D dimension. Somebody to hang this wall, this chat somewhere on our walls. If I come and hang it, a good place, it will not be destroyed. You can even hang it there. Okay, after the finish, you come and stick it. You see, I remove it, then you stick it. So we shall look at the 3D. Better construction in the next lesson. Thank you.
Which one? Who is touching? I don't want to see anyone here. No one should touch here. Let all the teachers operate this part. This part is not No one should be seen here. So yesterday you talked about some new terms. We talked about some new terms, and I said that I'll be giving some some notes, right? I thought and said I'll give some some notes. What do you remember from what we learned yesterday? What do you remember from what we learned yesterday? Yes. in temperature and force melting and evaporation. Yes, Kelly. The decrease in temperature causes freezing and condensation. What else did we learn? Yes. Sublimation. The process by which when you heat a solid and it changes directly from that form of being a solid to a gas, a gas directly is called what? Sublimation. Uh -huh. What else? What else? Yes. The method in which in which liquid turns into solid is called freezing. Uh huh. When a liquid changes its form from being a liquid to a solid, we say it has done what it has frozen, and that is freezing. What else? Yes. When a gas steam, when steam is cooled down and goes back to the liquid state, that's called condensation.
matter to contract. Contract means what? To shrink. Is it okay? Yes. Matter will shrink. We have the process involved when temperature is decreased and this is freezing and condensation. When water is cooled, when water is cooled, huh? when water, there's something missing here, when water is when water is cool at a very low temperatures, I know some are just writing. Huh? When water is cool at a very low temperatures, is it okay? It freezes. It freezes. When steam or vapor is cooled, cool down, it condenses. Is it okay? Yes. Then we have an illustration here. Water to ice. For me to change water to ice, remember water is a liquid. Ice is a solid. So freezing must take place. So that cooling whereby the water changes from being a liquid to a solid is called freezing. 
Yes. Is it okay? Yes. The second illustration, when I cool steam, when I cool steam, back to water, that one is called condensation. Is it okay? Yes. Is it okay? Yes. Then you look at the illustrations now. Ice, liquid, and gas. To change a solid to a liquid because it is density. A liquid to gas evaporation. Gas to a liquid condensation. A liquid to ice is vapor. Is it okay? When naphthalene, you said naphthalene looks like Katsuko. Is it okay? Huh? When it's heated, it changes directly to what? To a gas without seeing water. You don't see water. Is it okay? So it only some things like smoke and it evaporates like that. That process called sublimation. It's called sublimation. Okay. You have an exam beginning next week. You have a good exam beginning next week. You promise your parents heaven. Last time when they came. Thank you. And the exam okay. next week. Yes, and some of them might pay for the for the trip when you do very well in next week's exam. Okay. Okay. When you get worried about that, so how do you go? Okay. You just started fighting inside our house. Before I explain some other things, there's something I want to explain. There's something I want to explain. I think I might have left the talking to you on the kitchen table. I think I'm not getting there. Can you really go to visit there? I think I'm not getting there. I want to draw an illustration about the conversation process. Thank <laughs> you. 
So this diagram they are saying it only illustrates illustrates what condensation process. Is it okay? Yes. The water droplets were able to form on the walls of the bottle because of condensation process. Is it okay? So the water droplets are able to form on the walls of the bottle because of condensation process. So that's the bottle with cold water. You can be having cold water, you can put some ice, ice cubes. Is it okay? Yes. So let us write and finish. Thank you. 
Changie somo kama kawaida. Chini. Wengine upande ule. George kule. Valentine kule. Kale kule. Pamsari mmoja. Mali unaona ubao mzuri wa vivu wa darasa la 5 ambao watafanya kazi ya mwalimu. Alichimbia paipu chini. Haya. Nani aligundua kuwa sungura ndio ilikuwa mwizi wa maji? Nani aligundua kuwa gari? Kuko. Kuko aligundua vipi? Kwa nini unadhani kuko aligundua? Amalia. Kwa sababu pia alikuwa hapo chini. Alikuwa na pesa nini hapo chini? Alemu. Alikuwa Nani? Kuko 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 si yeye. Nani alikuwa analinda stima? Chuma. Sio kuko. Alikuwa na Aha, huko hakuwa anaangalia kusema. Mwalimu mfugaji mwalimu kulinda mama kulinda. Chura alikuwa analinda kusema alafu Nani alimuona sungura? Huko. Wewe unaongelea nani? Mwalimu Chura. Mwalimu. Ehe, Sharif Alimuona vipi ndio swali langu upande wa lafadhi? Ah. Huko chini ndio nauliza alikuwa anafanya nini? Sababu huko ndipo makazi yake. Huko ndipo anaishi. Anaishi kwa kuchimba chini, anajipita chini ya ardhi. Unaniuliza mimi na uko na kamusi? Nikasirike saa hii. Kamusi siko wapi? Jana nilisema tukisoma ukipatana na neno ambalo uelewi ulifanya nini? Alafu uliangalia wapi? Ah? Kule nyumbani anakuja kuiba si makazi yake. Nyumbani huwa anakuja kuiba nguo zako anakula, anakuja kuiba mahindi anakula, anakula, lakini makazi yake ni kule chini anajichimbia chini anakaa huko. Mimi sahii ana sijui kizungu nimekiatia pale. Ndio mwalimu. Sahii najua Kiswahili tuweke yani. Hai. Kwa hiyo tulielewa ule mwingine ile hadithi uliyosoma, si ndio? Mfalme wa wanyama alikuwa ni nani? Mwalimu. Alikuwa ni mwalimu. Oh, Salash. Ha? Sima. Simba. Simba ndiye alikuwa mfalme wa wanyama. Hai. Wale waliofanya hiyo kazi hongera kwenu. Wewe hata tutajoko siku kiona sijui kwa nini mtaka. Mwana nyambe ulipata zodi. Umenipata kuko? Wewe eh eh sikilizeni. Kuelewa ni kitu rahisi sana. Na mimi kuelewa kwenye niliwaambia ni kuwa pigia mstari maneno ambayo kuja yaelewa. Kisha kuyatafute maana yake kwenye kamusi. Na hiyo ndiyo sababu mliambiwa mnunue kamusi. Hamkuambiwa mwambie madam Mativo maana mimi najua. Wewe ndio ujui. Sinivo? Eh, kwa hivyo yale maneno wote uliyopigia mstari hakikisha umetafuta maana yake. Ujue. Sawa sawa. 
Ndio kesho ukilipata mali pengine ile neno unajua linamaanisha Naelewana? Eh sio kushindana kila mmoja anataka yeye ndo aseme inamaanisha nini. Mimi najua. Mwenye ajui ni nani? Mimi. Asikia mwingine ananiambia wewe. Mimi najua. Mwenye ajui ni nani? Sawa tunaendelea na Kiswahili. Kiswahili. Nakumbuka kuna wakati tulijifunza hapa ngeli. Tulijifunza ngeli gani? Ya. Ah sasa mna kelele mna fujo. Ehe. Ngeli ya u ya. Tulisema unapoandika ngeli lazima uandike kwa herufi kubwa. Tulisema nomino katika ngeli hii utuanza na silabi gani? Mwalimu. Silabi kuu katika umoja na ya katika wingi. Ma katika wingi. Alafu maneno yenyewe ndio huanza na hizo silabi. Maneno ambazo ni hizo nomino katika ngeli ya uya ya huanza na silabi ku katika umoja na ma katika wingi. Kiambishi ngeli cha nomino katika ngeli ya uya katika umoja ni kipi? Kiambishi ngeli cha nomino katika ngeli ya uya ni kipi? Tuendelee. Ya mishingeli katika ngeli kwa nomino ambazo ziko katika ngeli ya u ya katika umoja ni kipi? Eh. Nataka kiambishi ngeli katika umoja. Kwa nomino ambazo ziko katika ngeli ya u ya ni kuu ngeli katika wingi mkono tu ya kwa nini tunasema ngeli ni ya u ya kuwa tunasema kile kiambishi ngeli katika kile kitenzi katika umoja ndicho kitakwambia hiyo nomino iko nyinyi na biashara zingine hapa kile kiambishi ngeli katika kile kitenzi katika umoja ndio kitakwambia ile nomino iko katika ngeli gani. Kwa hivyo unapotunga sentensi tulisema ukitaka kujua nomino iko katika ngeli gani. Unatunga sentensi fupi ambayo iko tu na nomino na kitenzi. Si ndio? Ili upate kiambishi ngeli katika kile kitenzi katika umoja na katika wingi ndipo utakapojua lile neno liko katika ngeli gani yeah. kwa mfano neno ugonjwa ugonjwa tunga sentence ukitumia neno ugonjwa tunga sentence ukitumia neno ugonjwa tunataka kwanza kuangalia ugonjwa ni neno ambalo liko katika ngeli gani. Kwa hivyo sentence yetu iwe fupi tu iko na nomino na kitenzi. E binti. Haya mama na ugonjwa na nini? Hiyo sentence ni ndefu. Nimesema nataka sentence ya maneno mangapi? Nomino na kitenzi. Ndio tupate kujua kwanza hii ni neno ugonjwa niko katika ngeli yani ugonjwa umemuua ugonjwa ugonjwa ndio nomino ndio ndio umemuua ni nini kitenzi ume muua na wengine hapo wataniandikia hivi muua 
Mwale wakamba wenzangu, wako hapa hapa. Wakamba wenzangu, ina gift na na uywa. Na Nate, hao ni wakamba wenzangu. Ukimwambia umekuua analeta wa ndani. Ukimwambia amekuja anakwambia amekuja. Eh? Eh? Wacha kamba nyumbani. Tukuje shule tujifunze Kiswahili sanifu. Sawa? Eh. Let's tachukulia pale gate tukienda. Hii nyingine tufanye hapo. Ugonjwa umemuua. Katika wingi. Katika wingi. Ah, love. Love. Hapana. Magonjwa yamemuua hapana. Hapana. Nimekataa eh gift. Magonjwa yamewaua. Yamewaua. Nini?
Kwa hivyo ukitaka kujua neno liko katika ngeli gani. Tunga sentence fupi yenye iko na nomino na kitenzi peke yake. Usitunge sentence mama alienda sokoni akanunua Tumesema hii ni ugonjwa. Ugonjwa umesema. Hii ni ugonjwa. Hayo ni maneno mangapi? Eh? Haya. Amesema hii ugonjwa. Kaka, tafadhali sitaki wajiga kucheka cheka bubu. Hii ugonjwa. Hiyo ndio sentence yake. Nimesema tutunge sentence yenye kwa neno gani na gani? Maneno mawili. Neno la kwanza liwe nini? Eh? Kalash. Neno la kwanza? Nomino. Elsi. Neno la pili? Kitenzi. Hii ni aina gani ya neno? Ni aina gani ya neno? Hii. Hapana. 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 Si kitu. Si kitu. Kiki ni kiashiria. Kisha. Kiashiria pia kinaitwa kionyesha. Kionyesha. Ni kama niseme hii ni kalamu. Sina kuonyesha? Eh, ni kiashiria. Hii ni kalamu. Hiki ni kitabu. Kwa hivyo hivyo ni viashiria. Sasa tuelewane hapa. Hii ni ugonjwa. Kitu cha kwanza, kiashiria cha neno ugonjwa sio hii. Ni nini? Kiashiria cha neno ugonjwa ni nini? Huu. Si hii. Kwa hivyo hapa utasema huu ni ugonjwa. Ama tuseme tu huu ugonjwa. Ukisema huu ugonjwa Inamaanisha hii sentence ilikuwa imeendelea. Huu ugonjwa una nini? Umeehe, umeua watu, umesambaa, unaogopewa. Hebu inaonyesha huu ugonjwa unatuonyesha tu lakini hujatuambia kama uko na kazi gani. Mwana mimi yetu tumesema sentence yetu ianze na nini? Ipate na nini? Hii imeanza na kiashiria, ikapata na nomino. Na kwa muundo wa sentence hii ni tofauti na vile tunavyo Hata huu inatumika kama unaonyesha kiti, lakini sasa inategemea unaonyesha kitu gani. Kwa mfano kama ni kalamu nitasema hii. Siwezi sema huu ni kalamu. Kwa hivyo hicho kiashiria kinategemea ni nini unaashiria. Hiki ni kikombe. Siwezi sema hii kikombe. Kwa hivyo kiashiria pia kinategemea ni kitu gani unaashiria. Tumeelewana? Tumeelewana wanafunzi? Ndio. Mitaala ni uko hapo unaota. Sawa? Ndio. Kwa hivyo ukishajua kubadilisha ama kuoanisha nomino na kitenzi inakuwa rahisi sana kubadilisha sentence kutoka katika umoja kwenda katika wingi. Tuangalie mfano hapa. Manake hapo ndio kuzungumwe ndugu kwa kifo hapa. Hiki ni ngwendungwe kimwendungwe. Haya. Unyoya wa kuku unaweza kutumiwa kutengeneza godoro. Unyoya wa kuku unyoya wa kuku unaweza kutumiwa kutengeneza godoro 
Haya. Mtu anataka haraka angalie neno Godoro. Wingi wake ni nini? Hicho ndio kisha kwani. Wingi wa Godoro ni nini? Limu. Na Godoro kuna uhakika. Hiyo. Kuna uhakika. Hiyo. Sasa kama huna uhakika angalia hakikisha. Iko na dakika tatu tu kumaliza somo langu. Magodoro, sawa? Wingi wa unyoya nini? Manyoya. Kwa hiyo tunaanza manyoya. Sawa? Hiyo mwalimu. Unyoya wa kuku mmoja. Manyoya ya kuku. Ya kuku. Ya kuku. Unaweza hapo ndio kitenzi chetu kiko, si ndio? Unaweza itakuwa yanaweza. Yanaweza. Kutumiwa, kutumiwa. Kutumiwa. Kutengeneza magodoro. inabadilisha nomino zingine na zingine mnazi watu hapo ndio mnakosea mimi nimesema tumesamuka na wenzako wakatumia wakasema wingi wa godoro ni magodoro sio ugodoro sawa 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 Ufu umeliwa na kuku. Ufu umeliwa na kuku. Ufu umeliwa na kuku. Wingi wa ufu ni nini? Pele demi maufu. Maufu. Umeliwa itakuwa yameliwa. Yameliwa. Na kuku na kuku. Eh wengine wataniandikia na makuku. Na ukuku. Sasa basi. Sasa basi kwa sababu shida iko hapo kwa kubadilisha sentensi kutoka umoja kwa wingi au kutoka wingi nataka uwe makini sana cheza na kamusi yako itakusaidia kubadilisha maneno kutoka umoja kwenda kwa wingi Mwache kuwa wazemu. Kuna nambari ya pili pale. Sasa. Kuna, kuna sentensi ambazo magizo yake ni pigia mstari nomino za ngeli ya huu ya katika sentensi hizi. Pigia mstari nomino za ngeli ya huu ya katika sentensi hizi. Ukimaliza kupigia mstari. Ningependa kuzibadilishe sentensi hizo. Ile ambayo iko katika umoja iandike katika wingi. Ile ambayo iko katika wingi ibadilishe iwe katika umoja. Umeelewana? Tumeelewana? Kwa hivyo cha kwanza ni kuandika zile sentensi na upigie mstari nomino zote ambazo ziko katika ngeli ya u ya. Kitu cha pili ni uziandike na kuzibadilisha. Ile ambayo iko katika umoja ibadilishe iwe katika wingi. Ile ambayo iko katika wingi ibadilishe iwe katika umoja. Nani amenielewa? Nani hakunielewa? Hai, ukuelewa nini? Ujaelewa nini mwalimu ni mimi? Oh, hujaelewa pia kuuliza hujaelewa nini? Ama hujui hujaelewa nini? Eh, hey, hey, Leon. 
Unaandika wapi? Si nimesema nambari ya pili. Pigia mstari nomino zote ambazo ziko katika ngeli ya u ya. Hilo ndio zoezi la kwanza. Zoezi la pili hizo hizo sentence. Uzibadilishe katika umoja au wili. Umani hizo sentence ambazo ziko katika nambari ya pili. Hizo si ni tano. Nasema zote kwani ni ngapi? Ni tano. Ni sita. Aya. Hizo sentence sita. Utaziandika na uzibadilishe. Zile sentence ambazo ziko katika umoja, uzibadilishe katika wili. Zile ambazo ziko katika wingi, zibadilishe ziwe katika umoja. Nani hajaelewa? Note mmeelewa? Ndio. Si mwena jioni njema? Siendi, siendi, niko hapa hapa na nyinyi. 